Hello, Martin here with more property top tips. Make sure you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. This particular top 10 tips is about buying land through auctions, through estate agents, through any other means. What are the things you need to look out for when you're buying land? It's a top 10 list. Let's start with number one. Make sure that you understand the level of planning that is attached to the land you're thinking of buying. It could be that the land is just greenfield, in which case your chances of getting planning permission on it are fairly slim. It could be that it's brownfield, as in it's had something built there before, in which case the likelihood if you get in planning is increased slightly. It, you need to know the location of the land. Is it in a planning authority area? Is it within a development boundary? Is it within uh, a village boundary? Uh, is it part of a conservation area or a, a site of special scientific interest or outstanding natural beauty? You need to know the status of the land to know what kind of issues you're going to have when it comes to getting planning on that land. Number two, get professional opinion, both on the value of the land and what you might be able to do with it. A professional land survey will be able to tell you what kind of things may or not be achieved uh, in terms of the abilities of things you can do with that land moving forward. And certainly if they work alongside an architect or a planning consultant, they will be able to guide you on what may be or might not be possible when it comes to building things in the future. And don't forget to involve the council or the planning authorities at an early stage because they will be able to guide you in terms of outline ideas of, as to what would be approved potentially on that bit of land. Also get them to check out the status of the land for you. Get that professional to check out whether or not planning applications have been submitted in the past and failed. Uh, check out whether or not there are planning authority changes in the offing. Whatever you do, get a team of professionals around you to advise you. Number three, check out the services. How easy is it going to be for you to connect to a water supply, to the gas mains and to electricity? Those kind of services are really expensive to have put in. So it can cost you hundreds, if not thousands of pounds per meter to have electricity, water, gas installed uh, to uh, a new plot of land. So if there are existing services, it can really cut down the amount of Money you're going to have to spend to make that plot of land usable as a place that you could build a habitation on. Number four, similarly, check the accessibility. How easy is it to get on and off the land? How easy is it to access good roads? One of the people that will be involved or groups of people that will be involved in any planning decision will be the highways authority. And they will want to make sure that people who live there can get safely on and off that bit of land without affecting existing road systems. So how accessible is the land? How easy is it to get building materials to and from that plot of land? And generally, is it easy to get to and from there as somebody who might live there. Where is it actually located in terms of existing transport links and the like? Number five, check out what neighbouring plots of land are doing. Is your plot of land potentially affected by whatever happens on plots of land nearby? So you want to again look at bigger picture planning things. What's planning to be built in the vicinity? Are there factories? Are there other houses being put up? So know what's being done in the area and how that might affect your plot of land in the future. Number six, what other plots of land are in the vicinity and are there opportunities for you to negotiate deals with people who own those surrounding plots of land, thereby increasing the potential for development on your plot of land. Talk to people who live in the area, talk to neighbours and people who own plots of land in that vicinity to see if there are joint ventures you could do or other opportunities that could benefit everybody. Number seven, be very wary of previous uses for that land and this 
definitely applies to brownfield sites where there has been some kind of building there in the past. What was that building or that plot of land used for? Is there any chance there could be contamination, chemical contamination from say a garage that was previously located on that spot or an industrial complex? Is there any asbestos? Is there anything buried underneath the ground? Uh, was it used as a dump? What happened to previous buildings? Where is all that rubble located? So you've really got to know the history of the plot of land to make sure there's nothing nasty that's been done there in the past. Because if there is, it's going to cost you a lot of money to put it right. So number eight, check out what happens around that plot of land over a 24 hour period. So is there a school run which passes right in front of the plot of land? Is there a local building works or a factory which is creating a lot of noise or disturbance at various unsavoury times of the day or night? You've got to visit the plot of land at different times of the day to make sure uh, that there's nothing on toward which is going on at that plot of land over any part of a 24 hour period. Number nine, make sure there aren't any footpaths or rights of way crossing your plot of land. If there are, this could cause you all sorts of problems as trying to reroute them or just block them off will a potentially be illegal uh, but also cause a lot of unrest in the local community. So check out if there are rights of way that might stop you building whatever it is you want to build on your plot of land. And those plots, those, those rights of way and those footpaths may not have been used recently. They may be historic, but if they're there, they still exist as a public right of way or a footpath. So make sure that you know where they are and how they might affect you. And finally, number 10, make sure that you know about anybody else who has rights of access across your land. Perhaps a neighbouring property have the opportunity to drive their car across your plot of land to access their own plot of land or a building which they own. This is something which your solicitor should be able to check out. If anyone has rights of access or rights of way across your land, because that again could heavily influence what you're able to do with it. So those are the top 10 things to look out for when it comes to buying plots of land. I hope you've enjoyed this. Make sure you check out all the other top 10 tips on my property YouTube channel, Marty Roberts Property Tip Bits. Some of them are in this playlist and there's lots of other information on other parts of the site. For now, if you've liked this video, please do like it and also subscribe to the channel. And I'll be back with more property top tips very soon.